everyone's like, oh, it's our bigger brains. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, it's part of the story. But like, Wales could be making this show if that was, if it was just that. I'm Ella Alshamahi, I'm a paleoanthropologist and evolutionary biologist, and I'm the presenter of Human. We were not destined for greatness. And I think that shocks a lot of people. A lot of people think that we were the new kid on the block. As soon as Homo sapiens turned up, it was game over for all the other species. And let me tell you, it was not game over for all the other species. The evidence kind of alludes to potential showdowns with the other species, potential, it's still very controversial, and as not necessarily succeeding. Like for example, around the same time, there was one cave that was filled with Homo sapiens, and there was another cave that was filled with Neanderthals. That basically means they were both living there at the same time. And it looks like only the Neanderthals continued living there. We quite likely became locally extinct. It's not a story of a species that turns up and is immediately brilliant. We had to evolve quite a bit. And I think we had a bit of luck on our side. You know that image of one species leading to another species leading to another species? I have a problem with that for two reasons. One is obviously, you know, where are the women? The second problem I have with that image is that it gives the impression that evolution is just really linear. So one species dies out, gives rise to another species, et cetera, et cetera. And we now know that that is just not the case. Human evolution is so much more complicated that there were loads of us living on the planet at the same time. Different groups were interbreeding. We actually only know the tip of the iceberg of how many human species are out there. Since I've been a paleoanthropologist, we have discovered so many more species. Like our family tree got a lot bigger <laughs> in the last few years. And so it's funny that that image that is so ingrained in people's minds when they think of human evolution is just actually quite inaccurate. <laughs> Epic question. I'd marry the Neanderthal. This is kind of controversial, but I would probably avoid Homo erectus. They were kind of earlier and, I, and therefore I'm assuming a bit more primitive and I don't know how much I'd trust them. This is the one I'd make out with. It's not PG-13 what I was about to say. This is Homo floresiensis, who a lot of us nickname the Hobbit after Lord of the Rings because they're basically about one metre tall. It's like the brain size of a chimpanzee. And yet it was bipedal, so standing upright on two legs, making stone tools. It, it had the behavior of a human and yet is this size. And this is just, in my opinion, the most bizarre find. I just want to know them. You know, in a makeout session, you'd, you'd have a certain amount of time where you could chat. <laughs> just tell me about yourself. I suddenly realized that it looks like a kink. <laughs> I'm probably never going to be able to include this. When people um, think about our large brains, they think that the size of the brain is what makes us brilliant. Truthfully, Neanderthals had very similar sized brains to us. Elephants, whales, they have big brains too. And yet they're not watching this series. <laughs> it's about the organization, in my opinion, of that brain. We seem to have a capacity to copy each other and learn from each other. And also we had the advantage of many, many people. Look, all of these are theories, right? There was a lot of Homo sapiens compared to, well, for example, the Neanderthals. That means you have a bigger source of people inventing, copying, perfecting the technology. If you have 50 people in your group, you've all got to get really, really good at everything. Hunting, gathering, et cetera, et cetera, because you've all got to work really, really hard to survive. If there's 500 of you in your group, suddenly you can start specializing. All of those people, inventing, perfecting and tinkering. Everyone's like, oh, it's our bigger brains. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, it's part of the story. But like, Wales could be making this show if that was, if it was just that. I don't think we fully understand how hard life was. The Neanderthals were contending with some really, really cold climates. I would really struggle with that. Life as any kind of, uh, of human before agriculture was very, very difficult. That's why I always laugh at people that talk about the paleo diet, because I'm like, they were all dead by my age. The Neanderthals towards the end of their time were just kind of riddled with diseases because of inbreeding. So I think if, if you had to be a Neanderthal, you'd probably want to be an earlier Neanderthal. Because, yeah, life got pretty bleak. I am quite moved by certain things about the other species. 
I have seen up close uh, Neanderthal handprints. I can't even say that without getting goosebumps. That image that we have of the Neanderthal, like kind of like, I don't know, knuckle dragging ape man. You don't imagine them putting their hands in red paint or red ochre to create these impressions. In that same cave, there were kiddie handprints. So the kids of these Neanderthals were also learning it. And that, I think, is something that we relate to so much. Like what other species walks up to a wall and thinks, I want to leave a mark? It's bonkers. Like that is something that is so us. I've been so, so lucky. Oh. I was really, really excited by the island of Socotra, which they describe as like the most alien looking place on earth. It's full of like species that exist there and nowhere else. The thing that I found really, really fascinating about that place was that lots of people um, on the island have roots that are very, very linked to caves. And we turned up to this one place where people literally lived in front of the caves that they were born in. And they actually still retreat to them during the monsoon. You just think, oh my God, if people were living in those caves like 20 years ago, that means there's probably really, really good archeology span in those caves. So I would say Socotra, just in terms of the science of it, just the beauty of it and just how alien it looked. <laughs> So I will say I love caves. I really, really love caves. Like for me, they're like a bit of a spiritual experience. I appreciate it makes me sound like an idiot, but anyway. What are any of us looking for in a home, right? You want somewhere which is safe, protected from the elements with caves. They come in all shapes and sizes. Oh, and the one thing you actually do want if you're gonna get a cave is if it's like kind of high up and it gives you a good vantage point on the landscape, because then you can be like, oh, you know, that enemy's coming or, you know, Mary's coming. Good views, good views. You know, just what you're looking for in a flat in London. In terms of things inside that cave, it'd be super helpful if there was like some running water. You want to be able to set a fire and not die from the smoke. So you want there to be good aeration. You also sometimes bury your dead there. Sometimes let's not go too far. <laughs> like, living and cooking in one place without turning it into a cemetery as well is the way I'd like to live personally. I can't always admit to some of them. <laughs> Which is bluntly kind of annoying because it would give me some serious street cred. The ones that I can like admit to, I went to the island of Socotra, which is between Yemen and Somalia, and we got there via a cement cargo ship and just sailed through pirate waters for a few days. And it was really a ship that was not fit for purpose, but it was the safest of options. Properly bonkers, that expedition. This series, I slept in a rat's nest. No joke, an actual rat's nest. They would not leave me alone all night. I, I got to the point where I was like, lads, you can be here. I just need you to be quiet because like, in in four hours, I've got to be on camera. I got infested with fleas in this series. <laughs> that was the whole team we came down with fleas, only because I'm the presenter. There's an issue with continuity. So basically there were these trousers that were clearly infested with fleas and I like had all these bites on me and they were like, you're gonna have to be in it for a few hours long. <laughs> so not Lara Croft, more just like me and all the insects and animals. <laughs> 